good morning. Um, I have the pleasure to introduce to you this morning uh, Natalie Boulanger, who is a senior vice president in charge of um, startups for Orange. For those of you who are not familiar with Orange, good morning, Natalie. Um, <laughs> My macro. <laughs> okay. Um, so the thing to know about Natalie, uh, well, first, for those of you who are not familiar with Orange, it's a um, mobile operator headquartered in France. It's um, present in 32 countries around the world, um, mainly in Europe, but uh, also in the Middle East and Africa. And um, Natalie has been um, with Orange um, for many years and has worked in many different capacities within the uh, company, both um, in operational and commercial um, jobs. Um, so she really knows um, the company inside and out. And she's had a lot of experience working with SMEs and with startups, and now in her uh, new job. She is in charge of everything that uh, Orange is doing with startups around the world. So we're really privileged to have her here today to, um, to learn more about how Orange is working with startups and how those of you uh, working for startups in the audience might, might work, with, uh, work with Orange. Um, it's become it, it's been notoriously difficult in the past for startups to connect with uh, phone companies and work with them. Um, their processes were not set up really um, for fast decision making and um, to to acquire products from startups. But this is this is really starting to change, and so um, and, our, and and Natalie will be telling us more about how how Orange is committed um, to working with startups in new ways. Um, Orange is one of a number of operators uh, who have opened accelerators. Um, you have Telefonica, Vodafone, T-Mobile, um, among others around the world. Um, <clears throat> Orange started out by opening a fab in Silicon Valley and then in France and ago. now has plans for- oh, One year ago. One year ago, okay, and now has plans for uh, Poland, Israel, and have you opened France. in Japan? France, and you've opened in Japan? Yes, uh, in Japan, it was uh, two weeks ago uh, in Tokyo, so I was in Japan two weeks ago to launch the fab. Uh, in, uh, in Paris, we launched our fab uh, last week, last Monday. And uh, we launched also the call for projects uh, for startups uh, in Poland uh, last week on Thursday. So it was uh, two very busy weeks <laughs> regarding our fabs. And of course, we launched also um, our uh, season two from San Francisco because we launched, uh, we, uh, launched uh, our own fab in San Francisco uh, one year ago. And uh, it was quite successful, and so we decided to to, ex, uh, to deploy I internationally, and to launch the season two from San Francisco. And it was it was launched at the beginning of February. I think it's important to note that this is part of um, a um, a larger. Um, initiative now in Europe to try to get large companies to work more closely with startups. European startups have traditionally been in, at a disadvantage because in the US, big companies buy from startups and in Europe, they traditionally haven't. But um, in Davos at the World Economic Forum this year, uh, Neely Crows, the, um, the vice president of the European Commission and the commissioner in charge of the digital agenda, launched a new program called Startup Europe that is specifically um, geared to having big companies work more closely with startups and Orange, along with Telefonica and, and BBVIA, uh, are the, um, the first partners of the program. And Natalie was right there in Davos uh, for the, for the it launch of It was a great that. moment. <laughs> yes. So there are a lot of different ways that startups can work with mobile operators. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about you know, how, how, you, how you work with startups. 
Okay. Uh, but first, uh, regarding this uh, startup European partnership, uh, I wanted to say that, uh, well, we strongly believe that uh, the digital uh, economy is driving growth and uh, that uh, we, we, we really want to, to work more closely between big corporates like Orange or like Telefonica and uh, the startups uh, to, uh, to have really uh, pan-European leaders uh, among the startups and so to create a job uh, in Europe. So that was the purpose of uh, this uh, Startup European Partnership we launched uh, last month so, uh, in, uh, in Davos. So it's really a situation where both sides have something to gain because um, on the one side, uh, mobile operators, like every big corporation, are acknowledging that they need to bring innovation in from the outside. But for the startups, it's a chance for them to of be course. able to, to scale very quickly if they have the opportunity to distribute their product through your client base. Of course. So you have how many clients? 230 million clients uh, all around the world. So, uh, as you said, uh, mostly in Europe, uh, Middle East, and Africa. Okay. So, so how is this? How is this a symbol of like the way that Orange thinks about innovation? Um, is this part of something? Um, a, a shift in mindset? Uh, well, first, uh, well, innovation, of course, is very important for us, and so we invest a lot in innovation through our 5,000 researchers uh, all over the world, in fact, in 12 countries uh, around the world. But, uh, of course, we know we are not the only talented people <laughs> around the world, that there are 10 million developers all around the world, and that innovation has to be open. And uh, so that's why uh, we, uh, well, open innovation also, I, I wanted to mention, is, uh, is part of uh, our DNA. It's not new for us, but of course we want to uh, improve ourselves and to, to work better and better with, uh, with startups. But it's part of our DNA because um, we deploy infrastructures. So um, 4G, for the time being, 4G, fiber, NFC, cloud, uh, that uh, triggers uh, the emergence of new services and that triggers also, of course, the emergence of new ecosystem of very innovative uh, SMEs. And, uh, and that's why op what open innovation is about. And uh, at the end, we want also, of course, uh, to uh, dramatically improve uh, the daily life of our customers. Um, you know, um, he health he education, smart home, smart cities, well, in a nutshell, a smart and sustainable civilization. Uh, working together uh, as Orange and with, uh, with uh, startups. Okay, so there's a lot of different concrete ways that the startups yeah. can connect with you. Let's talk about some of them. Yeah. Um, now, you're going to be launching something right here um, at four years from now, right? Um, later today. You want to yeah. tell us, start by telling us about that? N Maybe, uh, well, maybe we, we could start with the, the APIs because we are different, we have different ways to uh, cooperate with, uh, with startups, of course. Uh, we can, well, of course, uh, purchase uh, their product and services, and, um, uh, but also we have our distribution channel, so we can distribute. Uh, their product and services to our customers. Um, uh, distribution channels, I mean, of course, our shops. We have uh, 7,000 uh, retail uh, shops all, over, uh, all around the world, but also e-shops, of course, and maybe we will talk later on about uh, the connected object uh, regarding uh, e-shops. But we have also the cloud services, and uh, the API, because um, through our API program, so orangepartner.com, uh, if you want to, uh, to have a look at this program, uh, we, we provide APIs uh, to, uh, to the startups, to the developers, uh, to uh, develop quick, quicker 
uh, their product and services. So in many different uh, areas, um, open data, NFC, and we are organizing an hackathon regarding NFC just here. Uh, and I think it started at noon, so it's just started for 24 hours uh, to develop um, uh, new services uh, sim with simple and secure experience uh, for retail. So that's just now and just here in four years from now. Uh, for the NFC, but we have also cloud, uh, of course, uh, services and Internet of Things. Maybe we could show uh, a, a short video regarding our API program. I press the button and I hope it will go. No. Maybe I will press the button. Ah. Is it okay? Please, could you send us the first video? Ah, yes. Here we are. Excuse me. I'm sorry, it's in French. I apologize for the film because it was in French, so uh, I arrived too late. <laughs> and so, uh, well, it's the French version, but it was subtitled in English, so uh, I, thought, I think everyone understood. So, okay, so um, APIs is one way. Um, yeah. Let's talk a little bit. And uh, maybe for APIs, the, we uh, announced yesterday uh, we are going to launch uh, a new API, Orange Connect, uh, for identity and uh, with the GSMA and uh, with uh, a number also of other operators because, of course, those APIs are very important if um, many telcos use them together. And so. Um, so I read about this new service, Mobile Connect, this morning, and um, it, it's being positioned almost like a, a, a way for the operators to, to um, compete with Facebook and Google. It's a way for, uh, to, get, to, to use one, one PIN number to get on um, to all, all of the different services. Um, so uh, it, it seems like uh, it's, it's going to be an important um, service for a number of operators. Yes, of course. Well, it's a very simple way of authentifying uh, one, uh, in the, in the, uh, authentifying yourself uh, just through your phone number and your PIN code. And what is very important is your PIN code is only available on your mobile phone, on your SIM card, and so it isn't uh, going on the network, so it's a very secure way to authentify yourself and very easily simple and secure. So you're offering the missing ingredient security. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, so beyond the, the API, let's talk a little bit about Fab mm -hmm. and um, and how how that program has it works for startups. Because um, it's it's really not about 
money. It's not about getting a, a paycheck. Money, but, uh, There's a, a little bit of money, now. but it's, it's really more yeah. about expertise and mentoring and services. T tell us a little bit about the different things that startups can get through the FAB program. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the Orange Fab program is an acceleration, an acceleration program, so uh, it lasts three months, so it's quite short. It's dedicated to startups which already have a product or service uh, developed, or at least a very advanced beta. And we help them uh, during a, a critical phase of uh, go to market or go international. And um, so what's very... Of course, we offer them also some money uh, through convertible notes. So that's um, $20,000 in uh, San Francisco, 15,000 uh, euros uh, in France. Well, that's uh, the same. Uh, so it's not a large amount of money. But what's the most important is uh, during this acceleration program, we want really to help them to um, go to market uh, building uh, the links uh, between uh, with the right stakeholders uh, within the group. Um, so to uh, at the end of the program uh, to be uh, able to have a, a partnership either uh, with one of our business units or also one of uh, a big corporate uh, partner with uh, ours, uh, with us, uh, excuse me, uh, to, uh, to help them to go to market, uh, to reach the market uh, faster, and so uh, to get revenues faster, and that's also a way to help them to raise funds uh, more easily. And, uh, of course, during this program, we organized demo days uh, in Paris, in San Francisco, in the different location where the fabs are uh, located. And uh, we offer them uh, of co-working space, of course, and mentoring session uh, with external mentors, of course, um, but also with internal mentors, uh, our expertise, uh, marketing expertise, uh, techno technological expertise, design expertise, and the, this link which is really precious with the right stakeholder uh, within the group. And I think that's, that's what's really key and, yeah. and, and important for the startups in the room is because it's really tough to approach a big corporation and figure out who's the right person in the right department. And that's where your division comes in. Because um, yeah. Natalie heads up a division of 20 people and you know they really are focused on helping each of the startups in FAB figure out which part of France Telecom they need to get connected to, and then um, you know who are the people that they should be working with. So, so at the end of the process, if if things are going well, then they can do business with that division, or that division can connect them to the the right clients um, within within your circle. So, I think that's that's a big part of the the yeah. the value add. Yeah. In fact, we are the advocates of the startups within the group because, of course, it's not so easy to work closely uh, between a big corporate and the and the smart uh, and the startup because, um, well, the culture are different. Uh, the the sense of you, you mentioned it, the sense of time, decision making, yeah. is not the same in a, in a startup and in a big corporate. The resources are not the same also, and. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, last week I had um, someone from uh, my team who wanted to organize a meeting uh, with the startups and the different stakeholder, potential stakeholder within the group, and that was uh, 20 uh, people that <laughs> <I> said no. <laughs> so uh, what we want to do is really to protect startups um, from the complexity, because of course, maybe sometimes we, we can be a little complicated uh, within the organization and we want to protect the startups from this complexity to make sim things simple for them.
So you, you talked a little bit already about the selection criteria um, that you know the company has to have already be somewhat, it has to be more than just an idea on a piece of paper. But could, can you be a little bit more specific of like the kind of companies, uh, the, air, the, the, the sectors that uh, they focus that are of most interest to FAB? Well, in fact, it's the sectors uh, which are uh, for, uh, important for us uh, regarding our strategy. So uh, uh, it's, about, uh, it's about cloud, it's about Internet of Things, it's about big data, it's about uh, smart homes, smart cities, and uh, NFC and payment also. Uh, well, that's, uh, that's about it. And, um, and, and how many, so you said the, 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 inc the, the, the incubation period or the, 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 the accelerator months, period yeah. is, is, is three, three months. So, yeah. so you, do, you plan on doing how many groups per year? Two seasons per year. Okay. So and and each, each group is how big? Um, around six. So, uh, but well, I say around six because uh, for San Francisco, for example, the first season was uh, they, they selected six uh, startups. For the season two, they selected seven. Uh, in Tokyo, they selected eight. In uh, in Paris, seven. Well, it, it's around six. Yeah. So, so the bar is really high, and there's there's uh, selection process is pretty tough. So. Of course. Of course, but um, I think it's also uh, important for uh, because we could be very time consuming for startups. So I think it's important to say when we meet a startup to say uh, quickly yes or no. And uh, um, it, it is one of our problems because we are very polite people and sometimes we, 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 don't, uh, we don't say uh, no. And, and we say, okay, your, uh, your product is, your service is very interested, but you should meet uh, X, and, <laughs> and then they can go around, uh, yes. around the company, and, uh, and well, uh, time is money. And so uh, yes. I think it, it's better to, to say no rather than uh, to, uh, to have them uh, meet everyone and uh, lose their time. Absolutely. I think that was the main criticism um, that I've heard from startups in the past and working with mobile operators. They could, you know, it could take as long as a year or more to do a deal and that's as a very long time period in a young startup's life. Um, so, so they like to know where they stand and, um, and I think, uh, um, so, so I think it's important that you're, 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 you're very clear with them. Um, and um, um, so should we maybe show a little bit about what the experience oh, for yes. startups has yes. been we, for we the first class? We have a, a little film class. about the first season of uh, San Francisco. And, and just uh, about the FAB, I think it's a win-win program between the startups and Orange. Uh, we accelerate the time to market for the startups and we accelerate innovation for our customers. And so let me show you the video. Ah, I should have pressed the button before. I think it's working. Ah, yeah, it's okay. Hi, I'm Mr. Lopez, Vice President of Marketing and Products for Announce Cloud. We are excited to see where you're bringing the solutions to the cloud. Quick to the Orange in two ways. First, they provide a valuable access to the broader Orange community. And second, they help us test the initial iterations of the product to ensure that it met the standards we expect when we roll our product out to the cloud. Hello, my name is Brian Lee. My name is Mike Lynn. Anywhere, anytime, without any 
So we can go to connected objects just after. I'm, uh, I'm Jason Arnbury. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Soil IQ. We're changing how the world grows food, and we're really happy to have been part of the Orange Chat program. It's introduced us to investors, partners, and potential customers, and really changed our business. Hi, I'm Chris, CEO of Bonvelo. Hi, I'm Christian, CEO of Bonvelo. Bonvelo helps you keep track of all of your work for one with a small group. So um, actually, that last clip was a perfect segue <laughs> yeah. into our next topic, which is um, right here at Mobile World Congress, um, Orange has launched two um, online stores for the connected things. And they are actually now in discussions with this last company that we just saw on the movie, um, Phone Halo, um, to have their um, their product uh, distributed um, in orange orange stores. So do you want to tell us a little bit about how you want to work with startups focused on Internet of Things? Well, that's another way to accelerate uh, startups. Uh, so regarding the Internet of Things, because the Internet of Things is uh, growing uh, very, very quickly. And so um, uh, we decided to launch uh, two different e-shops. Uh, dedicated to Internet of Things uh, so that startups can distribute uh, their, uh, their connected objects on those two channels. So in uh, 19 countries in Europe and in South Africa. And we all also offer them support um, to, to select the right manufacturers if needed. Uh, to industrial, industrialize their product and uh, also to, uh, to uh, localize their product. I mean, have the right packages and the right uh, user guide in the right language. So uh, that's it. That's another way to accelerate startups. Okay. Now, for a very, very lucky few, um, uh, startups. Um, Orange is working with um, a, a VC firm called Iris Capital that does put substantial amounts of money into, in, into startups. So can you tell us a little bit about that program and some of the companies that you've invested in so far? Uh, well, we invest also uh, because startup they need customers, they need revenue, they need also uh, fund and money, and uh, so we uh, invest directly in some uh, startups. So we did invest, uh, for example, in uh, Daily Motion and uh, also in Deezer, which is. Uh, uh, an interesting success story because uh, we invested in, in Deezer, but also we have um, uh, a common offer uh, and we offer Deezer service uh, to our customers. Um, and, but we also uh, are part of uh, several funds, so uh, IRIS, uh, the Orange Publicist Fund, and uh, well, we had a good success story because uh, we, for the, with the exit of Mopub, uh, that was uh, last, uh, last September, uh, we did uh, very well, and uh, we uh, in invested also in Lookout. And Lookout is a mobile security um, service, and uh, we embed also this uh, this service uh, on our devices, Orange devices. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Nelly. So I, we have just a couple minutes left. So I wanted to know if any of the um, audience had any specific questions for Orange. Uh, all the way in the back. Can we get a microphone to the gentleman? Hello. Can you introduce Hello. yourself, please? Yeah, it's um, Bill Monday. I'm from a company called Blendology. Um, how did, can you sort of give us your opinion on the divide that's happening with the mobiles? 
in terms of you know, the Apple community not going NFC and sort of Europe really sort of sticking on with NFC. And I think your last um, uh, sort of company sort of was embracing the Bluetooth side of things. But do you see that you're going to support both of these platforms in the future? Yeah, we will still work, of course, with the two platforms. Did that answer your question? I just wanted to know, um, you know, at the moment, the Apple community isn't going down the NFC route. Um, so do you, how, do you, how do you plan to sort of do future security and uh, payments, etc., when you don't have a NFC-enabled phone? Uh, but, you know, we launched uh, our orange money uh, service uh, in, uh, in Africa and uh, it's going very well and uh, we are now also uh, launching uh, money, uh, international money transfer between, um, between uh, Africa and uh, uh, well, uh, among uh, different countries in, in, uh, in Africa, uh, linked, of course, with the Orange Money. And uh, we launched uh, in France uh, Orange Cash uh, with the Visa card. And, uh, well, we, we, uh, we are doing quite well in this, uh, in this field of uh, banking activity. I, I, I suspect that part of the... The reasoning behind that question was to know, since um, Apple has not embraced NFC, you know, our operators still committed to the system to to that standard. But I think the fact that you are actually hosting a hackathon here that's yeah, all around NFC exactly. is is testament to the fact that operators still believe that NFC has a role to play. Of course, we do. Yeah. And, uh, well, I think there were uh, 10 million uh, NFC uh, devices uh, sold in Europe uh, this year. So, uh, yes, we, we still believe NFC is, um, is a very important uh, issue. Okay. Any other questions from the floor? Hi. Uh, my name is Francesc. I'm from STS, software company. And I would like to know when does the program start to apply for it? Uh, to apply for uh, the Orange Lab program? Yeah. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we, we launched uh, the, as I, as I told you, uh, the uh, season one from uh, Paris, Tokyo, uh, and the season two from, from San Francisco right now, so uh, at the beginning of February. Uh, we, we launched the call for project in Poland um, last week. Uh, so uh, for Polish startups, they can apply to the uh, Polish Orange Fab program. Uh, but of course, <laughs> understand it's not your case. And uh, we will launch it in Israel also uh, during the first semester. And uh, well, the call for projects for the, the second semester uh, will be launched uh, during summer. I, I think we are just about out of time. Is there anything you wanted to say to, to wrap up? Well, maybe just to say that um, innovation is about uh, mixing talents, so uh, mixing different competencies. Uh, we are working, our project team are uh, uh, composed with uh, engineers, marketers, marketers, marketing guys, and also designers. Uh, also uh, cultural uh, differences. Uh, uh, within our labs, we have uh, 35 nationalities for coming from five continents, but the mixity is also about uh, startups working with big corporates. So that would be my okay. <laughs> conclusion. All right. Thank you very much, Natalie. Let's Thank you, Jennifer. Give, give Natalie a, a big hand. Um, Thank you very much.